You know I've got a Morphe slash Forma slash Jaclyn Cosmetics slash REM Beauty update for you this week. Uh, and not a whole lot going on, but some little tidbits from four different areas of this bankruptcy that I want to share with you just to keep you up to date. The update on Ariana Grande trying to acquire the rights to REM Beauty from Forma. We've got some inside stuff on the rejection of certain contracts, including some familiar names. We have some more information on Ply hair care and how that relates to the information that we've gotten from Jaclyn Cosmetics. So much going on there. Beyond that, we are going to talk about Makeup Revolution and how it looks like they've copied another popular product from another popular brand. We'll talk about how we feel about that. And then when we get into the product report, man, <laughs> these brands are trying so hard to get our money. They're opening up in new locations. They are trying different strategies with different types of products. Products, and we're going to talk about how we feel about those and all of the things that are happening in the makeup space. So if that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the makeup space right now. But before we get going on what is happening right now, we need to take a moment to thank this week's sponsor. Hello my friend, welcome back to my bathroom. This video is very kindly sponsored by Skin Store. If you have never shopped at Skin Store, it is a fantastic website where you can shop over 8,000 products and over 300 different brands. I am especially a huge fan of their skincare selection over there because when you shop at other retailers, you get used to seeing the same brands over and over and over again. Skin Store does have a lot of those brands, but they also have different brands to try new things whether it's your hair routine, your makeup routine, or your skincare routine. As part of the sponsorship, Skin Store was kind enough to send over some products for me to try. So I did pick out some things that are kind of tried and true that I've heard really good things about. So I grabbed the viral Peter Thomas Roth Instant Firm Eye Temporary Eye Tightener. I also wanted to grab something that just looked really interesting and I love Skin Iceland products. This is the Dissolving Micro Needle Eye Patches. I've never used anything like this before. For. And y'all know how much I love my cleansing balm, so I'm always on the hunt for new ones to try and share with you. This one I've been absolutely loving. This one is by a brand called Lululun. So you open it up with the little tab there, and then they send this really nice spatula to really get in there. It does have a moderate floral scent, but it's not like a creepy floral. It's not like an obnoxious floral. It's a very pleasant, sweet floral. And it is incredibly effective at removing my makeup. I also love that it rinses off very easily. I don't feel trapped in my cleansing balm. I don't feel like I've got all this oil all over my face. It rinses off very, very easily. I also got a tried and true product that I know so many of you love. Uh, they sent over the Good Jeans by Sunday Riley. This is a lactic acid product. If you've never used a chemical exfoliator before, this may be one that you want to try because it is a more gentle exfoliating product. And then finally, I asked them to send this over because I've honestly never tried anything from COSRX, even though I know a lot of you love this brand. This is the lightweight soothing moisturizer and what grabbed me on this is the propolis extract. I love propolis extract in my skincare. It's very moisturizing and also has glycerin in here, which is wonderful to have in a daily moisturizer because it helps your skin to retain and hold on to water. And that can help with oily skin, dry skin, or combo skin. So I wanted to try this out and I'm very much enjoying it. Skin Store was kind enough to give us a discount code. It is GenLove. It will also be in the description if you forget what it is, there's also going to be a clickable link down there that'll take you directly to the Skin Store website. Some exclusions do apply. So thank you again so much to Skin Store for sponsoring this video. I love being sponsored by companies and websites that I can genuinely tell you that I absolutely love and Skin Store is one of them. And with that being said, my friend, it is now time for What's Up in Makeup. 
All right, let's talk Morphe Forma bankruptcy stuff, starting with Ariana Grande and REM Beauty. So as you may know, REM Beauty is not under the Forma brand's umbrella. What they have is a licensing agreement. So Forma was handling a lot of things for REM Beauty, like doing the marketing, and they had the contract to sell in Morphe stores. They were kind of doing all of the behind the scenes stuff for Ariana, for her brand, but they did not own it. As soon as Ariana and her team got wind that Forma was considering bankruptcy, they were like, oh, we gotta go. We gotta get out of here before they declare bankruptcy. We need our stuff and we're leaving. Kind of like if you realize that your roommate can no longer pay rent. So the update this week is just more information about the contract that REM Beauty is signing to get their name back. The more information we've gotten this week has to do with some details within the contract of that $15 million deal that Ariana and her team are trying to get for those rights. And one of the things that Ariana is going to acquire along with all of the makeup and the gondolas that held the makeup in the stores and all of that, she is also going to be getting all of the debt that Forma racked up uh, while they were in charge. Thankfully, it looks like it's really not a lot of money. It looks like it's around $8,000, mostly due to people who were working for the company creating content specifically for REM Beauty. This includes a $6,000 bill to one particular artist. Her name is Katya Temkin. She has a beautiful Instagram Instagram with a lot of her work over there and she shows how she created some of the marketing pieces for REM Beauty. She has some beautiful pictures of Ariana over there. So Katya hasn't been paid for some of her work that needs to be paid along with a few other artists. What Ariana will also inherit is contracts with Ulta. So if you're used to buying REM Beauty at Ulta, it looks like that is going to continue. It is a purchasing agreement as well as their clean ingredient agreement are also going along with the purchasing of the the rights to the brand. I don't know what this is. It's my restructuring hands, apparently. <laughs> Let's talk about Kroll restructurings. They have officially filed paperwork to get rid of some of these contracts that they feel they should not be paying for. There was a contract rejection document we talked about many weeks ago. So it looks like this is the nail in the coffin for some people that we've been talking about, including Sister Sister LLC, owned by James Charles, Jeffrey Starr, Shelby Wilde, who had owned Playa Hair Care before she sold it to Forma, as well as if Media Ventures, which is owned by Scooter Braun, that's associated with Ariana Grande, and also two former CEOs of Forma. Their names are Eric Hull and Miles McCormick. So the formal paperwork to reject these contracts has been filed and it looks like they're going to be approved. The third thing is actually very interesting because someone contacted me that's an industry insider. They asked not to be named, but their company has been contacted multiple times over many months, they want this person's company to purchase Forma. And the company that has been contacting them is called Configure Partners. They were contacted many months ago, all the way up until this past week. But what's interesting about this is that a new document was filed this past week from Configure Partners, because it looks like Forma stopped paying them. And this is a big problem because in order to have a proper bankruptcy, you have to solicit bids for the company. You have to show that you are trying to get the highest sale amount for the company. It's just part of the way that bankruptcies work. And that's what this Configure Partners is doing. But they have now filed their own paperwork and said, bitch, you haven't paid us since January. You owe us. <laughs> About $50,000 is what they owe. They're asking for $40,000 of it to be paid right now. So I found that very interesting that Forma has even stopped paying the people that are helping them with their bankruptcy. It's like, what a freaking mess. What a mess. And then finally, we have some new information about Playa Hair Care and their finances. Last week, we went into all of the details about Jaclyn Cosmetics finances. And this week, I want to talk to you a little bit about Playa Hair Care because I feel like it relates to Jaclyn Cosmetics in a way because there's some similarities here, but also some differences. So let's talk about it. So Playa Hair Care, in 2020, their sales totaled about $490,000, about $2 million in 2021, and then a big drop to $720,000 thousand dollars in 2022 and that just that seems like significant sales like I know that it's not as big as like a major company like Forma should have been pushing more sales than that but I feel like that's higher than I had expected when I saw that Shelby was suing them for not incubating her brand properly. I feel like those are some pretty significant sales. I don't know what's your opinion on that. The other thing I learned that is probably not relevant but I 
thought it was something I should mention just in case. Apparently, Playa is being sued by a parking structure. Well, maybe not a structure, but a parking lease. It's a company called Kingsley Blue LLC. I tried to get access to the court documents, but it was like 150 bucks. And it's like, do I really care about Playa Hair Care and a parking company? Right now, I don't. So I'm not going to pay the $150. But I figured I would note it just in case it comes up again. The total amount of unsecured claims for Playa Hair Care is $293,000. But the real juicy bit, the real juicy bit that I wanted to apply to Jaclyn Cosmetics is that they had the same paper we talked about last week that had all of the different uh, people that have been CEOs and CFOs and all that. That was all there for Playa. And of course, because they are under the same form of brands, they have a lot of the same people showing up. But what is different is on that second document where they talk about people that have been CEOs in the past year, they list Shelby Wild, where we had not seen Jaclyn Hill listed as any kind of former CEO or founder. Shelby Wild is listed as the former CEO and brand brand founder of Playa Hair Care. So now we know what this would have looked like if Jacqueline had been the CEO and the founder of her brand when Forma took them over. I also found another similarity in that, remember at the very end, I was like, there's some money changing hands, but I don't know who's getting what. I don't know which way the money's going, but there's money that's transferring between companies. And some of you were kind enough to tell me that this is not abnormal for money to change hands between different companies under a parent company. But I did want to mention that it is is also happening between Playa Hair Care and Morphe. The amount here is about $315,000 for that trade off there. I looked to see how much Playa Hair Care has now kind of in their accounts and it looks like it's about $38,000 and that doesn't seem like a lot considering how much money they were bringing in in 2022 that now essentially almost all of that is gone. And then the last bit on this is just that there were similar documents for such good everything and if you've never heard of it, I'm not surprised because it doesn't look like they did very well. It was Forma's gummy vitamin company that they started. It, it's really bad. So they have exactly zero dollars in their account and their debt is enormous. They owe $16.6 million, mostly to General Atlantic, who apparently, I guess, maybe had invested money in this company to get it going in 2022 and apparently lost all of it which is, that's that's very bad. Uh, apparently gummy vitamins was not the way to go. Uh, yeah. Ooh. But yeah, that's it for this week because there wasn't a court hearing this week. There were just new documents filed. But next week, Oh my goodness, next week, next Thursday specifically, Oxygen Labs and Jaclyn Hill, the lawyers for those parties are supposed to be meeting in court in front of the judge to talk about the things that were happening there. So we'll probably find out more about the lipstick debacle and how all of that went. Very, very curious. This is the court hearing that I am most interested in of all of these court hearings. So make sure you're subscribed so you do not miss it. Lower cost companies creating dupes of higher cost products is nothing new. There are people that fall on both sides. Some people see it as outright stealing of someone else's work. Some people see it as not even a big deal because they're at different price points typically. Usually the product being copied is much more expensive than the product that is the copy. So they're not really even stealing each other's customers per se because the people that are buying the original probably won't want the dupe. I kind of fall somewhere in in the middle, but this is the particular situation I wanted to mention, and it has to do with Makeup Revolution, who is known for doing this, for taking other people's ideas and kind of making it their own taking inspiration, however you want to say it. So this time, it looks like they've taken inspiration from Jones Road's Miracle Balm. They have a new product called the Balm Glow. They say it is in response to the rising demand for no makeup makeup. There are five shades available at Ulta right now, and they are $12 each. Now, Jones Road sells theirs for $38 each, and there are nine shades available. I do wonder, and I would love to know your input on this, where do you fall as far as price point? Are you more on the makeup revolution side or are you more on the Jones Road side? If does this stuff affect your purchasing decisions? Like if you saw that it was the same product at a lower price point, would you go there? Would you do that with do you feel like it's stealing from Jones Road's customer base? Or are you not interested in these products at all? <laughs> because I know that there's some of you are probably in that category as well, but I'm just always curious to hear your feedback on things like this. Did you tune in for the Rihanna concert last week? I know there was some kind of game that was being played at the same time, but I was there for the concert. <laughs> 
I think it was like a 13 minute con. It was so good. I really enjoyed it. Although the official numbers I don't believe had been published yet, it looks like 115 million people tuned into the Super Bowl, including the Queen of Fenty herself, Rihanna, performing at the halftime show. If you're curious what she was wearing on her face, it has been reported that she was wearing their new product. It is called the Icon Velvet Liquid Lipstick, and it was in the shade MVP. She, of course, is also wearing their Pro Filter Foundation in shade 320 and the Invisimat Instant Setting and Blotting Powder. And people kind of lost it when she was in the middle of the performance and one of the backup dancers was holding the powder and Rihanna just grabs it very quickly, opens it up, kind of swipes it a little bit and then hands it back and then just keeps going. As you might know, halftime performers do not get paid to perform in the show, but I guess maybe this was a way for a little bit of free advertising, you might say. I don't know. I personally love that she did a little plug for her brand. I think it was smart. I thought it was cute. I didn't think it was distracting. But there were two bumps with the performance. The first one was that Rihanna was showing off her little baby bump. She is pregnant for the second time. Congratulations to her. Not that she watches What's Been Makeup, but <laughs> congratulations to her out in the universe, wherever she may be. And the other one is that there was a bump in Google searches specifically for the phrase, is Fenty safe for pregnancy? It bumped up 3,333% after the performance. A lot of brands will talk about how a percent of their profits will go to a charity. And sometimes it's always, sometimes it's just for a specific period of time for a specific purpose. But honestly, like rarely do we actually see a charity that is associated with a company, like that's their charity growing and doing really good things. And I feel like Rare Beauty's Rare Impact Fund really does a nice job of updating customers and just people in general of the things that they're doing with the money and who they're donating to for their charity. The Rare Impact Fund, if you are not familiar with it, was launched, of course, by Selena Gomez as explicitly connected to Rare Beauty, and they focus on donating to mental health initiatives, especially programs that help young people. So last week, they announced an additional $1.5 million that they are donating to 12 different organizations. All of the organizations focus on mental health services and education for young people around the world. So if you did not know if you've ever bought anything from Rare Beauty, 1% of sales always goes to the Rare Beauty Impact Fund. They also raise additional money through foundations, corporate partners, and individuals. Selena said about this in a press release, quote, I am so proud to continue our commitment to addressing youth mental health with additional support from these for these incredible organizations. Having access to tools and resources that help me understand my own mental health has had an incredible impact on my life, and it is my life's mission to reach young people who need support. I'm very grateful to these organizations organizations for the work that they do. So some of the added organizations are the Black Teacher Project, the Mindful Life Project, and the Trans Lifeline. For a list of more organizations that are impacted by the Rare Impact Fund, I will link the article where I found this information down in the article's links down below. Already ready to get into the product report. Which first company we are talking about is ColourPop. They have released a new collection. It is a Snow White themed collection. I'm very thankful to be able to show you some of those products today that they were kind enough to send me to try out. This is the Dreams Come True Pressed Powder Palette. We also have the Love's First Kiss Lip Trio and the Evil Queen Lip Trio. They look like this in real life, in person. Here are the products that I'm wearing on my face today. We're going to be talking about these in PR Purchase Product of the Week. There's also three shades of Super Shock Blush. And isn't this so cute? This is the Just One Bite Lippy Scrub. There is also a Magic Mirror. It's so cute. It's adorable. This does peel off, by the way. I took a second. I was like, that better not be there. <laughs> like, what's the point of the mirror if there's just a face in there other than to like legit ask it questions? But it does peel off the little thing here. It comes off. So no worries there. Individual prices are from $10 to $22. You can get the full collection for $99. But of course, as ColourPop does, smaller bundles are available. So we're going to be talking about NPR purchased in just a minute. We'll talk about the eyeshadow palette. We'll talk about the lippy stuff. Uh, I, we'll talk about this cheek color. And we'll also talk about the lip scrub. And I also have to show you this Makeup Forever foundation that they were kind enough to send me in PR. We'll talk about how that's worked as well. So hang tight. We're going to get into that in just a second. Next product to share with you is the Beauty Bakery. Hella Scoops. It is available now at Target. $14 there. Very cute color story. Next, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Hypnotizing Pop Shots. 
Say that five times fast. I, I hadn't seen these before. Somehow I missed them when they launched like four months ago, but there is a new shade in Pillow Talk. Everything is Pillow Talk over there. <laughs> but that's okay. Have you tried these? I feel like that's such a cute name for a single shadow, but like, what? how much are they? They're $34 for one eyeshadow? I don't know. I can't imagine it being worth $34 for one eyeshadow, but you know, everyone's got their price points, I guess. Over at Sephora, we have from Laura Mercier, the Tinted Moisturizer Bronzer. It does come in four shades, $30 each. They say it is an effortless cream bronzer with all the benefits of the beloved Tinted Moisturizer. They give skin the perfect natural sun kiss glow and 12 hours of hydration. That tinted moisturizer is actually really, really nice. I have tried that. I very much enjoy it. So I'm hoping that this bronzer is as good as they're saying that it is. Coming soon from Laura Mercier is another product. We have the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. There are 30 shades available. Relatively nice gradient here. It does look like it leans a little bit on the light side, but there are quite a few undertones in the medium and the deep range. So like I'm not hating it too much. I wish it was a little more balanced, but overall it does seem like there's a lot lot of skin tones covered in these 30 shades. This is going to be available on the app on February 21st and then all platforms on February 22nd. I have been seeing more and more brands come out with these bright pink blushes. Dior started this big thing where bright pink blushes are a thing. So Patrick Star's One Size decided that they were going to add a bright pink shade. This is called the Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio Palette in the shade Attention Seeker. It is $38. It is listed as coming soon. Also coming soon from Cali Ray, the High Light Radiant Glow Highlighters. Only two shades there, $30 each. They say it is a radiant, long-lasting highlighter with a transparent base for no ashy cast. They say it visibly blurs pores, fine lines, and wrinkles while hydrating with Eco Squalane. I love the branding of Cali Ray. I think it's so pretty. Like, I love their colors of the brand. Like, it's just pretty to me. I don't know what it is, that whole beachy, California beachy thing. I don't know, I love it. This one is what I was talking about when I was saying brands trying out new types of products. So Benefit is coming out with a skincare line. Now they used to have a skincare line a long time ago. I honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if it still exists or not, it may. But this particular skincare line is brand new. It has new branding that I think is real cute. It is based on their professional line. So it's all based I believe for people with oily, acne prone skin, people that feel like they want a reduction in pore size. And one thing I love about this is that they do have for most of the products, both a full size and a mini that you can purchase. So there's the Deep Retreat Pore Clearing Clay Mask, the Titan Toned Pore Refining AHA and PHA Toner, the Good Cleanup Foaming Cleanser, and the Get Unblocked Makeup Removing Cleansing Oil. So those are all available in both full size and minis. Two products that are only available in full size, those are the Speed the Smooth Mask and the Smooth Sip Lightweight Gel Cream Moisturizer. Full size products range in price from $29 to $44 and the minis range in price from $15 to $20. They also have a value set. See, I think this is so smart to have different ways that people can purchase. So the value set is called the Package Deal Pore Primer and Pore Care Value Set. It's priced at $34. You get a pore clearing clay mask, a toner, a mini professional primer, and then you get a little sample packet of the foaming cleanser. And I'm super curious to see reviews of this. I don't believe this is meant for my skin type. I'm not planning on trying it, but I'm really curious to see whether this, these are effective products for other people. I have a feeling that they probably are. And now we're getting into the brands that are new to the location. They want it to be available in more places, more accessible. Glossier is now at Sephora. Everything from the lip balms to the blushes to the perfumes, everything is there, eyes, lips, face. 33 products altogether, and I am rooting for Glossier. It wasn't that long ago we were reporting that Glossier was, like, things were not looking good for them. Brands seem to drop out of Sephora quite often, so I'm hoping that this works out for them, just getting in front of new faces, that it's a success. I'm rooting for Glossier. I hope they do very well. And then over at Ulta, speaking of brands moving into a new location, Natasha Denona is now available at Ulta. 38 eight new products, all makeup for eyes, lips, and face. This includes the new Glam Face and Eye Palette, but honestly, what calls me the most is this highlighter that I will never use. Like, I would buy this because it's pretty, and then I would use it, like, four times. Like... <laughs> So I'm not going to buy it, but it's so pretty. Like it, like the picture calls to me. It's like, buy me. No, I'm not buying it. And then these products from Chanel are fascinating to me. 
total, I've never seen anything like this. You'll have to tell me if you've seen anything like this. This is the Water Fresh Blush. It comes in five shades. They're $50 each. So what it is, is they have this like liquid. I don't know what the texture of the liquid is, but it's like this clear substance. And then the pigment is floating in there. And then when you rub it on, the pigment's supposed to like spread out. Like, that's kind of cool. And then there's the Water Fresh Complexion Touch. It's the same concept, but with like a foundation-y kind of thing. There's 13 shades here, and these are $70 each, but it does come with a brush, which I think is really, really smart. They say it is a medium coverage formula that offers customizable application. They say it, you can conceal specific areas or apply all over. I think both of these look really, really neat. And then finally in the product report, two very, very cute products from Beauty Blender. We have the Sweetest Blend Bare Necessities Cleansing Set. It's their blender cleanser, but what they did was they shaved it like a little pink bear. <laughs> so there's that. And then uh, also coming in that is a bear shaped silicone cleansing mat. That's $20. And then they have one called the Sweetest Blend Berry Flawless Blend and Cleanse Set. That's $22. And it has that same bear shaped little cleansing guy. And then it has a champagne colored beauty blender to go with it. And this is my question because I was watching a little video over on Alta's website. That little bear, like honestly, like it's real cute. In theory, it's real cute. But when you're using that, like, are you really going to be able to use the whole thing? I highly doubt it. Like, you're going to get halfway through that thing and the little arms are going to start breaking off and it's going to be a mess. Poor little bear is going to disintegrate and you're not going to be able to use half of it. I wish that they instead had come out with like a tin and then had like a bear imprint in it. Like maybe had like a little bubble over top of it or whatever so you could see the little bear in there with the tin, you know, so that you could functionally use the whole thing instead of having the thing just like and dis disintegrate in your hands. I, I think it's gonna sell because it's cute, but logically, like functionally, that's gonna be a no. All right, we have made it to PR purchase product of the week. I love doing this in What's Up and Make It because it gives me an opportunity to kind of show you what I've been getting into my life and kind of give you little mini reviews of things without having to create a completely separate video. So let's talk about the ColourPop Snow White collection. This is the eyeshadow palette. It is really cute. I love the color story for the theme. I feel like it matches the theme absolutely perfectly. Functionally, it was also very nice to work with. This is just my first time using it. I use the shade Someday in my crease, and then I use the shade Carried Away on the outer corner of my lid, and the shade Spell Breaker on the inner corner of my lid, and then in the inner corner of my eye, and then on my lower lash line, I use the shade Far Away on the outer side, and then this one is one of those super shocky, real soft formulas. This is the shade Ever After. I use that on the lower lash line on the inner side. This one really was hard to work with, to be honest, with you. It, it didn't really put off a lot of pigmentation as far as trying to use it on the lower lash line, but most super shocks don't do that. I just really wanted to use this shade specifically there. Like I wanted that color there and that was my only way to get that color there. So I probably won't use it on the lower lash line anymore, but let me show you some swatches. So this is the super shocky shade. It's just not, there's not a lot there. Let me swatch it again. Cause if I can get it to show up, I think it's going to be really pretty. <laughs> I'm going to swatch a couple more for you. So see how they look kind of powdery? Like, and you can't even see that super shocky shade like at all. Let me do a third swatch on that one, on that Ever After shade, and then I'll double swatch the other one so you can see the build. The regular shadows do build pretty nicely, but that Super Shock, man, like it's, it's very subtle on my skin tone. Very, very subtle. It might show up more on a deeper skin tone when there's more contrast. I'm gonna be honest, I probably won't reach for this palette very much, even though it's fine. Like the color story, it's just, it's not really my jam. I would rather reach for something else to be 100% with you. On my lips, I have to tell you my big regret. So I use the Evil Queen stuff and I really should have used the lip liner. I don't know why I want a shortcut and not use a lip liner all the time, but I don't want to ever use a lip liner and I should have because as soon as I put on this Evil Queen lipstick, it just started bleeding into my fine lines so bad, so bad. Like it was... I had to clean it up. I should have just taken the whole thing off and put the lip liner on, but I was being stubborn and I didn't do it. This is the Luxe Gloss that matches with it. This is freaking beautiful. It is gorgeous. I will say it did meld into the lipstick like pretty well. Like it melded and you can't really see the iridescence in it once you put it on top of a lipstick, but... It's real, real pretty. And then I topped it in the center because I always have to overcomplicate things with a little bit of this whiter shade that's called Spell Breakdown. Break, not Breakdown. Breaker. Spell Breaker. Not Spell Breakdown. Spell Breaker. I put a little tiny bit of that in the center of my lips. So if you do get this, do not neglect the lip liner, especially if you have fine lines around your mouth. 
Don't neglect lip liner. I should know better. How long have I been doing this? <laughs> Two other products from this collection. I tried this blush today. This is I Wish I Wish and it is a super shock blush. Honestly, this is more of a highlighter, I feel like, than a blush. It is absolutely beautiful, but there's, there's a little bit of tint to it, but it is mostly a highlighter. See how you turn it and the color disappears? Unless you're very, very fair, this is gonna probably mostly be, like I said, a highlighter. And this is so freaking cute. This is the Just One Bite Lip Scrub, but it's not very scrubby. ColourPop's lip scrubs have very little grain in them. It's mostly a lip balm. Like there's no grit. I can't even feel grit. I guess when you get down a little further, there's more grit, but it's mostly a balm. I wouldn't buy this as a scrub. The smell on it, it smells just like a red apple. Like if you cut into a red delicious specifically, that is exactly what this smells like. Now I do not enjoy the taste of a red delicious, but I do enjoy the smell of it. And that's what you're getting here. So yeah, if you're expecting a scrub, don't get it. If you want more of a balm, Yes, if you like the apple scent, yes, very, very nice. So I've recently been added to two new PR lists that I'm very excited to be added to. The first one is Rose and Ben. They sent over this beautiful, beautiful brush. It is for complexion products, and I decided to use it with the other product that I got today from a new brand for me. This is Makeup Forever's new HD Skin Matte Velvet. And okay, so I have things to say. I put on my... Don't drop the brush, Jen, come on. So first I use the C42 foundation brush on half of my face. I will show you the picture of what that looked like. I just did it on half and I could only build it to medium. I tried really, really hard to build this up to a full coverage and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't cover everything. It just wasn't happening. So really to me with a brush, you're gonna get light to medium coverage on this. Like you can go light if you want, but I don't think it's gonna get to full coverage for some people. Then on the other half of my face, I decided to to go in with the sponge that comes with it and I felt like I could get to medium it was a little faster to get to medium coverage with the sponge and then I what I did was I did the whole thing like I tried to just cake it on cake it on cake it on cake it on with both and I still barely got past medium. Like I still feel like I'm at like not full coverage. Like I think if you're expecting full coverage from this, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you like medium, you'll probably really like this. I really like the finish on it. I haven't tested this beyond today, so I can't speak to wear time or anything, but I'm gonna keep playing with this and I will keep you updated. Quite a few notable sales this week, starting with pharmacy. We have a progressive sale. It is $10 off $50 or more, or $20 off of $75 or more using code SAVE MORE. Then we have from Tula, 40% off using code VIP SALE 40. We have a secret sale that I guess is not so secret over at Sigma, 40% off using code SECRET. That lasts until February 20th. Then we have the indie brand Pretties for Your Face, 50% off select makeup and 20% off of all bath and body, free domestic shipping on orders over $50. Over at Pat McGrath, they have a sale. Big shocker, they have a lot of sales. But this particular sale is 25% off of orders under $150 and then 30% off of purchases over $150 for their VIP sale. Exclusions do apply to that one. And then finally, Makeup Geek. Ah, for some reason, I thought that they were completely done. Apparently, they do still have some products over there. They are doing a final sale, 75% off. So if you wanted to try some of their eyeshadows, the eyeshadow singles are only $1.62 each. They also have blushes for $2.50 each. I was hoping they would still have their big magnetic palettes. They don't, but they do still have some of the small magnetic palettes. Those are between $3.25 and $4.25. Artist shout out of the week. Allow me to introduce you to Brittany. Oh my goodness. I love this look so much. Let's talk about her Valentine's Day look. This is called On V-Day We Wear Pink. <laughs> so much to love about this look. For me though, it's mostly the way she uses contrast. She is so good at this. The matte pink tribal print over the blended deeper pink and the soft sparkly eyelids and the not true, too over dramatic lashes. This is so gorgeous. And I love the black outline around the bold pink lips. So, so, so pretty. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the second look. This is called Two-Tone Chrome. It is something just a little bit softer, but just as gorgeous. I mean, I don't understand how she gets her lips to 
look actually iridescent. Incredible. Just so wow. And I like how she isn't afraid to use bold blush with that softer graphic eye look. And the blend! <gasps> the blend! It is absolute perfect. Perfection. And then finally, let's talk about Space Princess Vibes. I love this one. Just like the artist from last week, she makes symmetry look so easy and completely effortless. Like, how are those blue curves so perfectly symmetrical? I do not understand it, but they are. I cannot even with this. And the blend of the green and the yellow and the orange and the pink, incredibly well done. So soft and pretty. I love it so much. She has so many beautiful looks over there. It was really hard for me to pick ones to show you. So if you would like to check out more of her looks, I just started following her. I hope that you go check her out and consider following as well. Link to her Instagram is down below. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you oh so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup. Hopefully, you can join us. If you are not sure how to join us, you are able to either live or on the replay go directly to your subscription feed. It should be right there if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you can go over to my channel page, click on my videos, and then you're going to click on the tab that says live. That's where all of my live streams are housed. They are perfect to just listen to. I always read everything to you so you don't have to be physically looking at the screen as you're listening. I would really love to turn these into podcasts. I just haven't researched it, but I think these would make great podcasts. Would you listen to a podcast if I had these available that way? Let me know what you think down in the comments. So hopefully you can join us live. If not, catch it on the replay. And I will take this opportunity again to thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, a thank you to Skin Store for sponsoring this video. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here, including last week's episode of What's Up in Makeup in case you missed it. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.